Uh, hold up, brother. Keep reading. Yeah? Yep. Uh, continuing on, Jeremiah 51 and 64. Go ahead. And thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink. Whoa, what? Thus shall Babylon sink. What? Thus shall Babylon sink. Then, thus shall Babylon sink. Remember, we talked about the Titanic. Who is Babylon? Babylon. It's America. You see that, brother? That's right, the unsinkable. It's America. So, just like you cast the understanding. It, you know, you you uh, uh you close the understanding, you seal the book, right? Just like you did that, the mystery was sealed. But now we know what the mystery is, uh, um, Amos 3 and 7. The mystery is, America is like the Titanic is going to sink. When is that going to happen? When war breaks out in the Middle East, which will be called the Third World's War. During that time, in the climax of the Third World's War, thermonuclear missiles will be shot up from Russia, China, and Iran, and even... America's allies, which is NATO, to destroy America, man. Right? Okay? That's, what's going, that's, what, that's how it's going to go down. Okay? But the lake, let me get Jeremiah, you see how the spell goes, because America's going to sink, but is America's going to sink in underwater? No. How's America? Under what? It's going to sink under fire. Under fire. That's right, brother. Go ahead. Get Revelation 20. That's the spirit. Only the spirit can give you that. Because people don't look at, at the fire. Because remember, people don't look at fire as something that moves, that can move in the same motion as water. Go ahead. Pick it up. Oh, no, no, 14. This is Revelation chapter 20, verse 14. Go ahead. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Into the lake of fire. Because people used the lake of water. But what about the lake of fire? That's a lake too. And Babylon is going to sink into that lake of fire. Not the lake of water, into the lake of fire, which is coming via what? Thermonuclear missiles. And that's the that's a coded spiritual truth. And we only know that because what? We got the Holy Spirit, and we are also what? We are the Holy Prophets of the Lord. Wait, right, brother. Revelation chapter 20, verse 14. Right. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Right. This is the second death. That's right. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. That's right. In the book of life, you know, it's talking about what? It's talking about the election, right? That's the election. It's a number chosen from the Heavenly Father given to Yahweh Shai as his utmost trusted servant, which you call the chief spirits. What's your question, brother? That's all. My question was in Revelation 11 and 7. So and right there, it seems like the apostles have to die before things keep off in the Middle East. How's that? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go to it. This is Revelation chapter 11, verse 7. What? And when they shall have finished their testimony. Read, read, read um, a few scriptures above. This is Revelation chapter 11, verse 7. Go ahead. Go ahead. Revelation chapter 11, verse 7. These are the two olive trees right. and the two candlesticks standing before the Most High, the power of the earth. Right. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth right. and devoureth their enemies. Right. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Right. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, mm -hmm. and have power over waters to turn them to blood, right. and to smite the earth with all plagues. Right. We know who that is, the prophets, you know, and especially going into when all hell breaks loose, we're going to get spiritual powers. We're going to be able to, you know, the Lord is going to give us powers to get out of situations. All right, right? And to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Right. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that has ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them mm -hmm. and shall overcome them and kill them. Right. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, right. which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. But see, that goes into the history because you know, even even in that chapter, it goes from the time when Yahweh Shai was in was was here to Yahweh Shai being uh, 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 caught up in you know being put to death and, and uh, for our sins, caught up in the work with uh, the third heaven, and then it goes into what? It goes into the captivity. It goes into the captivity, which in that captivity, what happened? We lost our inheritance, and when we lose your inheritance, what happens? You know, you lose the understanding and you remain in the congregation of the dead, thus leading you to the next, the, the next verse, which says what? Where also our Lord was crucified. No. And they, they oh, this is uh, Revelation chapter 11, verse eight. Right. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. We know what that scripture means, right? The dead body, they lay in the streets of the great city. Because our people are what? They're spiritually dead. But how did it happen? It happened through the process of rejecting the Lord after Yahweh Shah, 
you know what I'm saying, was caught up into the heavens, rejecting the Lord. The uh, 70 AD besieged Jerusalem, running into the west, interiors of West Africa, captivity, slavery, losing Jeremiah 17 and 4, losing our inheritance, and being dead for, for what? For hundreds of years before the awakening, which is happening now. Go ahead. It's Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, right. which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Right, which is the United States of America. Okay, go ahead. Where also our Lord was crucified. Right, our Lord was, but as we know, it's spiritual because our Lord was not physically crucified here. Is the understanding, right? The understanding of our Lord. The comp full comprehension of our Lord, Yahweh Shah, was exed out, was removed from the minds of Israelites. Okay, go ahead. Verse 9. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations right. shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. Right. This so now it's, it's telling you times. It's, remember that? The hundreds, when I say being dead for hundreds of years, that's what it is. The three days and time. talking about 300, going into 400 plus years of just being what? Uh, not having understanding of who we are. The Lord, uh, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, the Son. Nationality, tribes, and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah, you know. This is 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3. Right. Let no man deceive you by any means that they shall not come except they come or fall away first. That's right. That's that falling away. That 70 and eagle, right? It says, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Right. Which we had, you had the falling away in 70 AD, but you also have the falling away that's happening now. When, when martial law kicks in. You know, that devil, because right now we know Esau, the, you know, the so-called white man, Esau the devil. But the majority of our people don't know that, and nor do they want to accept it. But you know when they're going to know and accept it? When he comes down on them, that Revelation 12 and 12, when he comes down on them, that's when they're going to be like, oh, shit, this man is the devil. But by that time, it's going to be too late, all right? Did you get that scripture again, brother? This is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Right. Let no man deceive you by any means. Right. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Right. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. That's right. Speak Come on. You know, a falling away first. Right? And that's what happened. You know, uh, the scriptures also say that the Lord will take away our heritage as a people. Or we didn't know who we were. That's why when you go back into that revelation, it says their dead body shall rise to this in that great city. All right. But what we're, we're in the times where we woke up to who we are, our nationality, and things of that nature. Right? That's why it says in Ezekiel, it said, "Can those bones live?" Right? That was a question that was that was asked. That's right. Now uh, go back to that um, that revelation. What was the um, yes, the, the point? Um, what verse was that? Yeah, the question, what verse was, um... Verse 11 and 7. Verse 7? Where we at now, brother? Verse 9. Oh, so we... All right, go back to verse 7. This is Revelation chapter 11, verse 7. What? And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them. Right. And shall overcome them and kill them. Right. So remember, you're talking about the beast. Now, of course, I, 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 we went into, um, you know, the Roman Empire and so on and so forth. Now, when you go back into, like, now, and we know who the beast is, which ultimately is still Edom Esau. But when it says, kill them, remember, we have prophets that are going to lay down their lives. You know, we call martyrs, but it's really a different term, you know, because martyr means witness. But you have certain men that will be put to death for this word. But you also have men that would not be put to death that would actually see the Lord. Okay, so it's it's a it's not all prophets is going to be put to death. You know, it's not it's not it's not it's not talking about that. So read that again. This is uh, <clears throat> Revelation chapter eleven, verse seven. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit right. shall make war against them, right. and shall overcome them, right. and kill them. Right. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, right. which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. That's right. Where also our Lord was crucified. That's right. Now, somebody give me a uh, second as 13. And, uh, uh, all right, second as 13 started uh, 14. 
This is 2nd Ezra chapter 13, verse 14. But I did this. Oh, man. That's what I want. Oh, no, no. You know what? No, no, no. That's not it. That's not it. No, Eddie. Yeah, that's not it. Bring, bring out all the pieces that you got, brother. Speak a little. I'm looking for something. This is Proverbs 21 and 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. You know, and just going into that revelation, that's talking about uh, being dead and, and not having the, the breath of life, the understanding of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. There's a period of time where us as a people, we didn't we didn't know the Lord. You know, that's what that's talking about. That's what it's talking about. It's talking about shutting them up, not necessarily killing them. Yeah, being not knowing, not knowing the Lord, not knowing who they are as a people for a period of time. You know. This is uh, Revelation tonight. 11 and 8. Yeah, 11 and 8. This is uh, Revelation chapter 11. This is Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. That's right. We know that to be America. All right. That's spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. All right. Our people are walking around dead, man. All right, because they don't, they have no understanding. All right, continue. Where also our Lord was crucified. That's right, and our Lord is it was exiled out of this place, man. The ways of Yahweh Bashim Yahshua is not taught in this land, man. The ways of the devils was being taught in this land. You know? Verse 9. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a an half. And That's shall not... Oh, so That's right, so... It's jumping, it's jumping uh, periods of time in, in Revelation. Right, and that's what it is. And the key is, you have to know when it, when it, when it, when it takes you back to 70 AD, and when it brings you back into um, the situation, you know, where we at now. But the Holy Spirit would tell you that to teach you. Yeah, but that's a good question, because you, you need to know that. But you already, but see, one of the reasons to know is, that's why you gotta go precept upon precept, right? When you, when you go on to, um, uh, what's that, Mark, and it tells you that what not all that all of them that stand here shall uh, uh, taste of death. That tells you that what that okay. If the precept is talking about them having been killed, when was the last time? When was the last time all the disciples, which was apostles and, and, and prophets, were killed? It was during that time, during the time when after Yahweh shot, you know, saying went into uh, um, went 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 into uh, to the to the heavens to the Lord. It was during that time that the disciples eventually they all got put to death. Okay, so when but when you're talking about our time, you know that not we're not all gonna be put to death. So it's through precept upon precept that you're able to tell what time and season the scripture is talking about. Okay. This is Mark 9 and 1, it says, and he had and he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death. So they have seen the kingdom of the heavenly father come with power. That's right. And, and Yahweh Shai said that to his disciples. But clearly there's not men that are 2,000 years old right now. So clearly when he said that, he's talking about right now. We're living in that time right now. The men that you see preaching the word, there's men out here that's not going to die ever. They're going to get beamed up. They're going to be translated into the chariots. All right, and they're going to be into the, in the kingdom with the Lord and live forever in the kingdom. Because in the kingdom, you're not going to die. You know? And that's a promise right there, Mark 9, that is about to be manifest right now. That's right. You know? I'm about to say this real quick. And really, the reason why is because we died to this world. You know, we're dead to this world. Hey, Paul said, I am crucified with the Mashiach. That's right. All right? Nevertheless, I live. That's right. Because we living through the Spirit now, man. That's right. right. We living by the words of the Heavenly Father. That's okay? right. That's right. That's right. You got it. Like the brother said, we're no longer living uh, to do the deeds of the, of the flesh. Right. The works of the flesh. We're living to do the works of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Uh, get all of That's my question. It's um, second in chapter seven and uh, uh, twenty. All right, twenty-five. We're gonna read. We gonna we gonna close with this. Second Ezra chapter seven was twenty-five, all the way down to um, thirty. Uh, uh, thirty-four. 
This is 2nd Ezra chapter 7, verse 25. And therefore, Ezra, for the empty are empty things, and for the full are the full things. That's right. That's why, man, read that again. Because remember that that on that knucklehead that showed up earlier? Yeah. Right? That's for him. Go ahead. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 7, verse 25. Right? And therefore, Ezra, for the empty are empty things. There you go. For the empty are empty things. What he was looking for was what? It, had, it was vanity. It was vain. It was empty. So he got empty things. Go ahead. And for the full are the full things. Right. But for the ones who are full, for the what? In faith are the full things. If you are full in faith, that's why the Zaquan kept, the Zaquan Menagon kept telling him it's about faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. It's impossible to understand the Lord. Right. It's impossible to understand why the Lord would allow a man to, to you know, to put Easter right when it should be Pesach. Why? Because the Lord wants you to dig deeper. And because remember, He said that in Genesis. What did He say in Genesis? The Lord said in Genesis to Adam that what? Although I made the field grow without you tilling. Now nah, the curse says you're going to till now. What does it mean to till? You got to dig. You got to work. You got to look for. But Jake ain't trying to do that. But in this case, he's coming against the Lord. So read that again. This is 2 Ezra chapter 7, verse 25. Right. And therefore, Ezra, for the empty are empty things. Right. And for the full are the full things. Right. Behold, the time shall come that these tokens which I have told thee shall come to pass. Now, this is listen to this carefully because it goes into that revelation and it explains the time frame that I said from Yahushua all the way down to, to today. Go ahead. And the bride shall appear, and the coming forth shall be seen. The bride, who's the bride? The bride. That's right. Shall appear. Israel, go ahead. That now is withdrawn from the earth. How is Israel? Withdrawn from the earth at that time. What does he mean? You're not really digging into the stuff. You're not just really taking part of it. Uh, like we don't know who we are. Because Israel is not destroyed. The scripture tells you that. So if Israel is not destroyed and has never been destroyed, meaning never been removed, wiped out, why would, what does Ezra mean by the bride which is withdrawn from the earth? Meaning she doesn't know who she is. All right? She doesn't know who she is. She's in the conjugation of the dead. And that happened through a period of time. Go ahead. Verse 27, and whosoever is delivered from the foresaid evils shall see my wonders. Right. For my son, Yahweh shall be revealed with those that be with him. Right. And they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. There you go, within 400 years. Go ahead. After these years shall my son, Yahweh Hamashiach, die. Mm -hmm. And all men that have life and the world shall be turned. Well, what, hold up. Read that again. We, we go go back to the within 400 years. Go. Come. This is Second Ezra chapter seven verse twenty-eight. Right. For my son Yahweh shall be revealed with those that be with him. When did that happen? It hasn't happened. It has. It has. When Yahweh Shah was born. It has. How do you know? Keep going. And they that remain shall rejoice within four hundred years. Right. Because remember when Ezra wrote it. The Lord came 500 years later. Remember when Ezra wrote um, uh, Second Ezra um, 14 when it says, "For the, uh, the earth is um, uh, the tenth part of God." When he wrote it, it was already 9,500, and then 500 years later, Yahweh was in the scene. And then 2,000 years later, that's where we are now. That's why we always said the Lord was around 2,000 years ago. See that? 950, he's saying in the 500 years, the Lord is going to be revealable to, 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 to those, the disciples, right? Which it happened before, right? Verse 29. And, and what happened? What happened? Verse 29. Right? Uh, verse 28. I'm sorry. Right? It's so like, for my son Yahweh Shah shall be revealed with those that be with him. Right? And they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. Right? After these years shall my son Yahweh Shah Hamashiach die. Right? And all men that have life. There you go. Going back to that revelation, right? Remember, Revelation, Revelation 11, 11 to 7, and they, and they were killed? Yeah. Going back to that, because it said that he's going to be revealed, and he would, Yahweh Shah, he's going to be revealed, and he's going to die, and those that were with him as well are going to die. It says those that were living. You know what it, you know what it means to live, to have the breath of life, the, the spirit, the understanding. So, it, so the ones who had the understanding, which is the breath of life, were also killed right along with Yahweh Shah. Who are those men? It's the disciples. 
who became, you know, uh, apostles and were, were, were killed after Yahweh Shah had gotten killed. So now you understand that Revelation 7, when it says that they were killed. It was talking about at that time period. Right. Keep going. Verse 30. And the world shall be turned into the old silence seven days. The world of Israel should be torn into the old silence. What is silence? Quiet, meaning what? Lack of understanding. You know, you're talking about going into the, uh, the interiors of West, you know, 70 AD, the interior of West Africa, right? All the way up to, that's silence. That's not knowing who we are as Israelites. The planet not know who the Israelites are. The Israelites not know who they are. That's silence, right? Verse 30, and the world shall be turned into the old silence seven right. days, like as in the former judgments, mm -hmm. so that no man shall remain. Right. And after seven days, the world that yet awaketh not shall be raised up. That's what's happening right now. Because the seven days of silence has already passed. So now the world of Israel, the cosmos of Israel, of Israel who didn't awaken, now is awakened. Right. And that shall die that is corrupt. And that shall die which is corrupt, which is what? This world and really the flesh. Because ultimately it's this flesh. This flesh needs to die. Okay? Because the, the flesh is corrupt. Right along with this land. Go ahead. Verse 32. And the earth shall restore those that are asleep in yeah. her. Ain't, ain't. You know what you know what that means, right? Yeah. Right. Because that's what it is. Right. So the earth is restoring those that are what? That are in in because remember. The earth is talking about the dust, the dust is confusion that goes back to what spiritually dead. That's what it is. So, so it's restored, we're being restored, our wisdom knowledge is being restored. Add something? No, I was gonna no, I'm gonna say that that's a prophecy in Apocrypha about Yahweh Shah, mm -hmm. which validates or, or validates, validates the right. Apocrypha. That's right. Prophecy of Ezra speaking about Yahweh Shah. That's right. So so I can gotta put that in their Rolodex when they remember uh, the Apocrypha ain't part of the Bible. Well, it just spoke about a prophecy of Yahweh Shah, who the world called Jesus. It was facts, right. man. Because God talking about facts and beliefs. Those are facts. Those are just true. Right, right. That's why I, I love John 3 and 33. It says, those who receive uh, this testimony have set to the seal that these words are true. That's right. right. The prophecies are true. That's right. So things actually happen. Yeah, they're right. going to happen. And faithfully true. Because, yeah, yeah faithfully true. And that's what it is. They faithfully true. Like I said, spiritual facts. The reason why I always say spiritual facts is because spiritual facts are not looked at as facts to a carnal man. No. That's why Paul said we speak among those that are among those that are perfect. I always speak about that spiritual echo channel. I speak something, you believe, we believe, he doesn't, fuck him. And we keep moving. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. We don't need his validation. We keep moving with the ones who believe. You know what I'm saying? Second right. Ezra chapter 7 verse 32. And the earth shall restore those that are asleep in her. Right. And so shall the dust those that dwell in silence. See the dust. Dust means confusion, not being able to see. So now we see, because we couldn't see for a minute, right? And the secret places shall deliver those souls that were committed unto them. There you go. The secret places shall deliver those souls that are committed unto them, right? 33. And the Most High shall appear upon the seat of judgment. Mm -hmm. And misery shall pass away, right? And the long suffering shall have an end. Wait, right. how's the Most High going to appear, this, appear in the seat of judgment? Um, uh, Job 9, 9, uh, 9, what's that? 9, 19 and 29? Yeah, Job 19 and 29. Because, you know, this place is going to be, the judgment of the Lord is going to come through what? It's going to come via the Mystery. Mystery. That's how this earth, because think about it. When, when did the Heavenly Father how would get reverence in the ancient times? It was doing the deliverance. But what did he do? He brought hell to the Egyptians, man. That's when it was like, oh. And that's when Israel was like, oh, surely there's a God that judges. And the Egyptians was like, surely the God of the Hebrews is the, is, is the real God that judges men. So it's the same thing here. The Lord knows that that's how I'm going to get my reverence, by destroying the mother. Right? All right? Right? Job 19 and 29. Right. Be ye afraid of the sword. Be afraid of the sword. Go ahead. Be ye afraid of the sword. For wrath bringeth the punishments of the sword. There you go. Go ahead. That ye may know there is a judgment. There you go. So the judgment could only be known on earth through the wrath of the Lord. Meaning through destruction. 
that's how the judgment, that's when the, the scripture says that the most high will be in the seat, the seat of judgment. So read that scripture again. Again, this is no, 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 not that, but, oh. uh, this is second Ezra chapter seven, verse 33. Go ahead. And the most high shall appear upon the seat of judgment. How's that gonna happen? <laughs> By Thomunuka. Thermonuk, the whole world witnessing America and all these other places being destroyed by Thermonuk and Mrs. right? And misery shall pass away. Misery is going to pass away. Why? Because prior to that, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai is going to pull up. You're right, he's going to pull up with the angels, with the multitude of angels, right? He's going to crack the skies, right? And guess what? He's going to beam up his elect, man. So that's when our misery is going to end. When we Get into those, when we get into those ships and we see America gone, that feeling is gonna be, I, listen, I can't explain what that feeling is because I haven't experienced it. None of us, we can speak of it, but when you actually, when we go through it, I'm about to decide what party elect. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be something else, man. What? And the long, what? And the long suffering shall have an end. Verse 34, but judgment only shall remain. The judgment only shall remain, go ahead. Truth shall stand. Truth shall stand. And that's what it is, because right now we fight for truth. The Lord said what? Fight for the truth till death, man. And the Lord shall give you a crown of life. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it is. So and regardless of the majority of these people are liars, right? But we still gonna stick with the truth. And when America is destroyed, that's gonna be a sign that truth stood at the end of the day, man. That's when that Job 20, right? You know, when it said the triumph of the wicked is but for a moment, that's when it's gonna kick in, man. It's gonna seem like a dream, like, man, we was in that place for hundreds of years, right? This is 2nd Ezra chapter 7 verse 34, but judgment only shall remain, right. truth shall stand, right. and faith shall wax strong. And faith shall wax strong, man. Why? Because then, because right now they're laughing at our faith, man. All these people that's walking up and down, looking at us all funny, ah, look at them Israelites, and they laughing at our faith, man. They believe that our faith is weak. You know why? Because they see that we haven't been delivered yet. You see that? They see that we haven't been, we're still here in America physically, so therefore they think that our faith is weak. But when they see the Lord dealing with us as all hell breaks loose, and eventually us being delivered, that's when the scripture says what? Faith is gonna flex, man, in them days. And only the men that have faith are gonna be delivered. And that's what, and that, and that pretty much, that's it on that, and, and that hopefully explains uh, Revelation um, 7 in that part. So you know exactly what uh, the Lord meant through John the Revelator when he said, and those men were killed. It's talking about that time when Yahweh shot came. Right. All right, so with that, we're going to close out. We're going to say, Ka Hala, Yahweh, Give a double honor, of course, to our apostles, elders of Great Millstone. Shout out to the to you, since they're out there, supposed to four winds. Pushing the truth for the city of hearts. Stay strong, stay faithful. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh,